Hello Paige, thank you so much for joining me. Could we start by introducing yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, of course. Uh, so my name is Paige and I'm an apprentice at AstraZeneca, which is a global pharmaceutical company. I work in oncology research and development. So we work to develop potential new cancer treatments. And as an apprentice, I work for four days a week in the laboratory. And then on my fifth day, I do a study day in which I do distance learning and I work towards a degree in applied chemistry with the University of Kent. Okay, so it sounds like within your week you have quite a lot of variety, but in your role as an apprentice, what happens in an average day for you? Mm. So you're right that, you know, the best thing about my job is that no two days are the same. I generally spend about half of my time in the laboratory, but this time is spent doing different experiments and they are bespoke and designed to answer specific questions. So in doing these experiments, I get to learn new skills and work with different team members. And it means that my job is really dynamic and I enjoy coming to work every day. Um, so as an example, I recently started volunteering for the COVID-19 testing facility that's been set up by AstraZeneca, GSK and the University of Cambridge. And for me, you know, this is a completely new experience and I've been able to learn new skills and work with new team members. And it's been really, you know, uplifting, but also humbling um, to be in a team where we're working on something that's just so important right now which is just fantastic. Um, and then of course, it's not just the work itself as well. You know, I love running and cycling. Um, and I'm really lucky that, you know, these are things that I get to enjoy with my colleagues, actually. So we'll go for runs at lunch, we'll go cycling together. Um, you know, we even go for dog walks on the weekends as well. Um, and this is the great thing that in addition to that, I have the time in the evenings and on the weekends to pursue these hobbies that I really enjoy. Um, so I'm a dog trainer on the weekends, you know, and I get to spend that time doing that and also working with my own dog as well. Wow, so you're involved in lots of things. <laughs> I wonder what is it about your work environment that makes it so important to you that you do get involved in so much stuff? Sure. So yeah, absolutely. Enjoying my work is really, really important to me. Um, and in particular, I really like variety. I don't like to do the same thing day in and day out. Um, and I really get this in my role because I'm allowed to continuously develop my skills and learn new techniques. Um, and the team that I work with as well, I've kind of alluded to it, but you know, they're really important to me. And I'm lucky that my team is incredibly supportive. Um, they encourage me to learn and pursue areas of science that I find really interesting. And the bonus as well is that they're actually, they're good fun, <laughs> which is great. Um, and then, you know, perhaps the most important thing is that I can help people as well. So working in oncology means that, you know, my work could help people who have cancer. Um, and it's amazing. And, you know, I enjoy my job so much and it's fantastic that I enjoy my job and it has the potential to help cancer patients. Yeah, fantastic. So as your role as an apprentice, in terms of the overall goals of the company, where do you fit in? Sure. So um, my role fits into achieving the overall company goal of pushing the boundaries of science and delivering life-changing medicines. So I work in drug metabolism and pharmacokinetics, or DMPK for short. And what we do is we look at what the body does to a drug candidate once it's been taken by patients. So we determine how a drug candidate or um, compound is absorbed into the body, where it's distributed. And then we also look at how it's enzymatically changed or metabolized so that it can then be excreted from the body. And what we do is we gather all of this information prior to going into clinical trials so that we can predict what dose we should give for a drug candidate to be efficacious. Will there be any reactive metabolites or will there be any drug-drug interactions? And the experiments that we run allow us to predict this information with the aim of getting the best medicines to the patients that need them. Brilliant. Uh, so I'd next like to think about sort of you, the subjects you enjoyed at school. So your, mm. your job sounds very scientific, but was this something <laughs> that you always knew that you loved? It's a great question. Um, I would have to say I enjoyed a variety of subjects at school. So I enjoyed maths, chemistry, biology, but I also really enjoyed history, English, foreign languages. Um, so I'm American, so our school system's a bit different. And I had to take courses in science, maths, English, history, and foreign languages every year throughout school. Um, and what 
this did is it allowed me to study lots of different subjects, but it meant that when I got to graduation, I wasn't entirely sure what I should study at university or, or what my career should be as well. So you said that you came to the end of school and you loved everything and you, you weren't sure what to do. How was it then that you ended up where you are in a more scientific role? <laughs> sure, so um, it's a good question and I have to say that my career path has not been the traditional one. It's been quite varied. Um, so after I graduated from school, I decided that I wanted to study Russian and international relations. Um, so I went on to study that at university and I really enjoyed it at the time. So I ended up doing a master's degree at the University of Birmingham in Russian and Eastern European studies. Um, but when I finished my master's degree, it wasn't long after the great 2008 recession um, and I struggled to find a job. So I ended up working in marketing and I was working in marketing for a different pharmaceutical company um, when I discovered this passion for the sciences. And, you know, I found that when I was working, I'd much rather read the clinical studies behind our products um, than write the brand strategies for them. So I decided to, to change my career. Um, so at the point, you know, I knew I wanted to work in the sciences because I could see this, you know, firsthand impact that great science can have. Um, but the challenge I had was that I was still paying off the debt I had from my previous degrees. So I couldn't go back to university and study the sciences in a traditional manner. Um, so I was just kind of Googling science jobs in Cambridge when I found the apprenticeship at AstraZeneca. Um, and it was, you know, the perfect opportunity for me because I would still get this, this great science degree, uh, but it would be debt free because AstraZeneca would fund it. Um, and then at the same time as well, I would also get the industry experience that, that I really need for, for getting a job after studying. And I will have to say, I was a little bit worried coming into the apprenticeship that I would find the lab work uh, potentially a bit boring or repetitive um, because I think we all have these stereotypes of lab scientists, you know, they stand there in their white coats and they pipette from one place to another day in and day out and that's what they do. Um, however, when I found even, you know, from my first day going into the laboratory that it isn't the case. Um, and the fantastic thing is the lab scientists, you know, the people that I work with, they're some of the most creative and innovative people that you'll ever meet. <laughs> wow. So yeah, Russian and international relations is certainly not the most traditional route um, into your job role. What is the more traditional route? And are other people on your team from other varied backgrounds like yourself? Yeah, no, great question. So we do have a variety of backgrounds in my team. Um, so we do have people gone the traditional route. So they've gone through um, university and studied the sciences at university. Um, we also have some who've gone on and done PhDs. But in addition to this, um, you know, variety of educational backgrounds or, you know, paths into the sciences. Um, we also have people who are from, you know, across all different areas of the UK, um, but also, you know, from different countries around the world as well. So um, finally, last question, could you please name someone who inspires you and why? Yeah, um, so my great grandmother is someone I find really inspirational. Um, so she lived at a time when women were excluded from a lot of different roles in society. Um, and, you know, regardless of that, she went and pursued what she found interesting, you know, regardless of the stereotypes. So throughout her life, she was an opera singer. She was a rancher and a cattle ranch. She was a priest. She was a teacher. Uh, she was a nurse and she was a mum. So what she does is she provides the inspiration that, you know, regardless of our backgrounds, we can really just be who we want to be um, and work in the fields that, that we find interesting. That's brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Paige. Oh, thank you very much. It's been great. <laughs>